Hello YouTube, welcome back to my channel. My name is Neo. In this video, I am working on a return client, but it is her first time on my channel. So I've already gone in and removed her previous set. She had a snakeskin foil set with dark blues and ombres, and it was really fun. Um, but we're going in the complete opposite direction with this set. We are gonna go bright. We are ready for spring slash summer, and yeah, it's going down on this set. So. I already removed her nails. I have a video on my channel as showing how I remove clients' um, previous sets when they come in for a redesign and or refill. This client actually gets overlays. So these are her natural nails. She is adamant on growing them out and wanting to not have to use tips. So we try to just make sure that her nails are nice and healthy. They have a beautiful length. They're nice and thick and strong. So I make sure to apply a full um, base layer of clear acrylic on her nails so that when she comes in for a redesign I'm filing down to the clear acrylic la layer all the way down her nail from the cuticle to the free edge so if you see a little bit of blue on her nails that's that blue acrylic that we used previously but I am just prepping her now for her new set she had about maybe two or three weeks of new growth it was a good amount of growth and you can see where her um, natural nail is I am just using that diamond needle bit to kind of flake up the epinichium and you saw I went in both the forward and reverse um, direction that's because if you don't get all the skin moving from right to left you can flip that e-file in the other direction and go from left to right now I'm just using a diamond ball bit to kind of smooth off the skin um, she's in the medical field and her skin is often dry as well I get a lot of those kinds of clients but no biggie now I'm going in with a fine sanding band at a low speed using my new Koopa me file and I am going to be buffing the natural nail. So I'm just focusing, if you can tell, on the, the back part of her nail where the cuticle is. I am not pressing really hard. We're just removing the shine and um, smoothing out that clear acrylic layer that's already on the nail. Nothing crazy. Once all of that is done, it is time to prep. So I'm going in with my primer system. I like to use the Mia Secret Dehydrator and Primer. And then I like to go in with a thin coat of the Young Nails Protein Bond. This is what I use on everybody and it works for the most part in all cases. So this is the um, primer. I'm applying it only to the new growth of her nail. So you see me just applying it to the back area. That's because there is already a layer of clear acrylic on her nails. So once I'm done with these three coats of prep, I'm going to go in with my base coat of Young Nails Core Clear and I'm just focusing it on that back area of her nail where the natural nail has grown out and is a bit exposed. So I'm using the Young Nails um, Core Clear and the Mia Secret um, Monomer and I am just going to be, you know, giving her a fill-in for the most part. I'm also carrying a little bit of clear acrylic down the length of all of her nails because that blue stained so much and some of it was on the natural nail. It was just kind of like, all right, we got to protect these nails. She loves her natural nails and I don't want to damage them in a file down to remove the set. So I'm just adding a thin coat of clear acrylic all over her nail, but focusing mainly on the refill area where the natural nail has grown out in the past two to three weeks. In this set, I wanted us to go with a nice, neutral, kind of warm, nail plate nude kind of color, and we are using creme brulee from Sugar and Cream. I feel like all my best 
nude kind of colors I have are from Sugar and Cream. They just have such a variety of shades and this one was perfect for her. It's a little bit warm and a slightly bit deeper than like normal and it just worked out because she's brown girl friendly and I thought it was going to be great. So I'm just going in. This is an overlay for her. We're just trying to keep her natural nails and you're going to see that I'm going to be molding the acrylic, especially around that free edge to be in that square shape. I just want to make sure that uh, we're not going wonky with the acrylic and then I have to do extra filing just so that I can maintain her nails. I'm also going to just be two beading all of the nails, one bead in the middle, one bead at the cuticle and then blending downwards. But my focus is to have a nice beautiful shape. Um, I have a video on my channel um, where I, you know, did a very short, I think it was like a medium length pink acrylic set where I focused on um, good shaping. Um, so that's basically what I'm doing here, but I'm using the product to kind of mold the shape that I want around that free edge. One thing to also note is that these, this client's, her nails naturally curve downwards like over her fingers, especially on her pinky and her pointer finger. So those two nails are gonna have a little bit more product. What I like to do to correct that, um, most of the time you'll see uh, nail techs kind of build up the product and then file the nail on the bottom edge to kind of you know promote that straight uh, free edge look. She doesn't want me to cut her nails, so I just build up product a little bit thicker on the free edge, especially on that pointer finger. You're gonna see um, perhaps when she turns her fingers to the side that it's a little bit more product than I, would, I wouldn't use on the other fingers. That's because that nail bends down a lot, so to correct it and get a straight um, nail shape from the top, I just build up product around that free edge. Other than that, it's a simple acrylic application. I am just making sure not to flood the cuticle and or sidewalls and then to make sure that majority of the product stays in the middle of the nail so that we have good structure on top.
So after applying that cuticle bead, I'm going in with a third bead on this nail towards the free edge. And this is where I'm gonna be building up structure so that we have a straight nail from the top, but necessarily from the side, you're gonna see that the nail does dip naturally but I'm building up the product to kind of be thicker on that free edge so it's straight from the top I'm not sure if you know what I mean but this is me just adding a third bead of acrylic not to where the apex is but all along that free edge not so much that it puts weight on her nail we don't want there to be like a stress point but if you can see um, her nail does curve down over her tip so I'm just making that slightly thicker we're just going to do a regular application on this thumb making sure to be careful not to flood the cuticle and or sidewalls and to just have a nice smooth application After application, I am going in with a medium grit hand file and just giving a preliminary um, shaping. We did pretty well with the acrylic application, just making sure that it was a nice square shape, but I just want them to be slightly sharper. We're going to be doing some hand painting and I wanted the nails to just be nice and crisp before going in with the e-file. So nothing crazy. I'm going to be doing light surface filing, but we're going to go in with the e-file after, so I don't have to do too much work here.
So because the application was fairly smooth, I'm going in with a narrow, this is a fine carbide bit from Panna on Amazon. I love these narrow bits versus the wider bits just because a lot of my clients have like more narrow or smaller nail beds. And I just feel like I have a little bit more control in going from right to left, left to right along the surface with an, a smaller bit. They do have the jumbo size bits or like the normal width bits, but I do really enjoy these um, narrow ones. So I'm just going over the surface of the nail, smoothing it out as you can see the dust is pretty fine it's nothing crazy I'm not removing a lot of product remember I didn't clear cap these nails so it's just this one acrylic layer I'm smoothing out the surface of the nail making sure that there's no hills or valleys or lumps and bumps and cleaning the cuticle and sidewall areas to make sure that there's no product touching the skin because over time that will allow moisture cream oils things like that to get in the skin and it'll cause a surface breakdown Just to make sure that the nails are absolutely smooth, I'm going in with a buffing block and I'm gonna give each nail a nice buff so that when we go in with this gel polish application, everything is nice and smooth. And like you know I do, I like to spray my client's hands down with some swipe and or alcohol and use a manicure brush and or a lint-free wipe to just kind of clean any dust or debris from the nails. Also, this helps to get rid of any oils if they happen to like touch their hair or their face so that when we go in with the gel application, we don't um, have a breakdown of that product. So I'm going in with a regular gel polish, which I just needed a white gel polish. I could have used a gel um, paint, but this one was closer on hand. Um, so this is the Model Ones or Model Ones um, Great Gatsby white gel polish. It will be linked below, just like everything else. And we are going to be using these um, 
synthetic nail art brushes that I talk about all the time. I get so much use out of them. And we're gonna be drawing some French lines across the length of her nail diagonally. So you see I'm drawing the little triangle from her sidewall to the opposite free edge. I'm kind of drawing that little point area. Then I'm just kind of like, yeah, I don't have time to be painting with this tiny brush. So I just take the brush from the actual polish bottle and fill in that gap. I'm trying my best not to make it too thick, but we want a good coverage because we're gonna be adding pigment to it later. Um, doing the French line on her pinky, her pointer finger, and her thumb. So because I learned from my lessons, I did have her cure her hand, um, her fingers after I did the French because I was going to move on. And when we did the other hand, I did make a mistake and mess up. So I learned from my own mistakes and fixed it. So I'm just going to be drawing two butterfly wings off the side of her middle finger. Um, at this point, I was just kind of winging it. I wasn't sure exactly what the butterfly was supposed to look like, but I had like a general idea. Um, if you're someone who's doing like freehand art and you're not sure, just pull up an image on Google or something so that you can reference I tell myself that I'm gonna do it all the time but I have my camera and I'm filming from above so I couldn't like pull my camera down to look up a butterfly and then put it back up so I'm just doing this from memory I'm gonna draw an actual full butterfly with the four wings on this ring finger so I'm just going in with the white I haven't cured anything as of yet in terms of the butterfly so if I make a mistake I am free to just wipe anything away and start over I think that's the beauty about with gel polish is that you can um, you know change your mind you can start over so I'm just gonna be drawing four wings um, arbitrarily you know adding you know wiggles and bumps wherever I feel necessary but it's gonna come together towards the end So I'm pulling out my pigments. We are gonna be using three different colors here. I've got yellow, a soft orange, and a hot pink. So I'm getting that ready and I have a small little fluffy painting brush that I got from the art section at Michael's. And we are gonna be adding some of this pigment to the white areas of her nail. So I'm gonna be doing an ombre from yellow to orange to pink, and I'm gonna be using quite a bit of pigment. This pigment is so strong and um, impactful, but I just wanted to make sure that I was pushing the product all the way into that gel polish. Sometimes when you don't do that, like if you're very light handed with the pigment, you'll see patches of white through, and I didn't want that. I wanted it to be completely um, you know, full of color. So for the butterflies, I'm using yellow in the center and it's going to radiate outwards in like a circle. So I'm doing the orange all the way around all of the edges and leaving space for pink on the um, ends of the butterflies. 
wings. So that's basically what I'm gonna be doing. The French, the pink is gonna be towards the tip of the nail, the free edge, then orange in the middle, and then yellow towards that inner corner on the white French area. And I know at this point it looks kind of crazy. It's just kind of like pigment everywhere. Where's where this going? Um, but it came out so gorgeous and beautiful. And I am going back and forth with certain colors just so that we get a nice ombre as well. Kind of pushing one color up into another. Once the pigment kind of touches the gel polish, it doesn't really uh, allow you to kind of blend. But I am trying anyway. Um, because I don't want it to be like stark um, lines of demarcation from each color. So I'm not applying it in a clear line. I'm kind of, you know, tap tapping up and down just to give a nice opportunity for ombre with these three colors. Afterwards, I'm going to take a nice fluffy brush and brush away any excess powder or pigment that didn't stick to the white gel polish. And the cool thing here is that the uh, extra pigment that's not attached to the gel polish just flies away for the most part. It doesn't really make a mess. I did get some of that hot pink pigment in her cuticles and like the yellow in her cuticles, but for the most part, I'm just gonna take a lint-free wipe with some swipe on it and just clean up both the cuticle sidewall areas and anywhere on the nail where there was like an excess of pigment that didn't get brushed away. Um, so. I'm being very careful not to touch the areas that I want, like on the butterfly wings and things like that. I'm just being very careful so that we don't expose that white gel polish again. But everywhere else, I'm just going to try and give it a nice little, you know, light cleaning if I can. So here's where the set comes to life. It is all about this black gel paint. This is an iGel Beauty black gel paint and I've got a very thin striping brush as you can see and I'm going to be using it to kind of outline these areas. So for the French nails I am drawing a thin black diagonal line across where I did that ombre and then I'm going to use another dotting tool that comes on the same brush set to do three dots around right in the corner of um, each of those French lines and those three dots are going to you know come back in every single nail for the most part. So I'm starting off with the French nails, doing a single simple black line and then three dots in the corner. I'm going to have her cure and then we're going to be drawing those butterflies. Okay, so because the butterflies were fairly abstract, I didn't want them to have completely solid lines all the way around. So I'm focusing the thickness of the lines towards the center of the butterfly and then just, you know, using the brush to kind of taper out along the tips of the tails. And then I thought it would be cool to add some black lines in the butterfly as well, just to give it a little bit more dimension. So I'm taking whatever is left on the brush at that point to kind of draw tiny little wisps inside the, um, not petals, what are these called? The wings of the butterfly. On the bottom piece of, piece, on the bottom wings of the butterfly, I'm drawing two little humps. As you can see there on the second piece, I drew a second hump in pink um, with the black gel polish. I'm drawing the little black wisps, and then I'm gonna use that dotting tool to draw three dots on each wing as well. So 
I didn't have a reference in front of me. I'm pretty sure this is not what butterflies look like, but you know, it's nail art and you can do whatever you want. If you're someone who wants it to be a little bit more realistic, no problem. Just, you know, call on your old friend Google and just be like, show me what butterflies look like. But I think that this came out really, really pretty and the black gel polish just kind of grounds everything and makes it a little bit more impactful. So the ombres look really, really stunning with the butterfly and the black wisps and the tiny black dots. I think that this set came out so pretty and fun and it just looks really great on that solid, beautiful nude color that just sits on her skin tone so lovely. So I was having a blast doing this and she was so excited as it, as it was like happening in front of us. I was like, I'm excited too. Um, so I'm drawing just a little wiggly line to represent the body of the butterfly, two dots for the little antennas, and then just drawing little like commas, I guess, for the antennas. I'm going to do the same thing on her middle finger for the half butterfly, drawing um, a black line and kind of letting the gel polish taper off towards the tip of the wing, and then drawing tiny little black wisps inside each wing, and then adding three dots on the edge of the wing, just like one, two, three and I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom as well. So I just had to show you what both hands were looking like. It was just so exciting to be at this point and it was kind of like, girl, this is so beautiful. I was low key jealous because like, as you can see, I have no nails on my hand and I'm just kind of like, her nails look better than my nails. So this is not good. Um, I told her that we needed a tiny itty bitty bit of bling and she was at first a little hesitant but um, when we were done she was like yes the bling makes a difference so I got my crystal bling set out I got this on Aliexpress please do not buy this from independent um, distributors I see people selling them for like 150 bucks 120 bucks I got on Aliexpress for $49 including shipping um, and it comes with an amazing array of rhinestones, crystal AB rhinestones. You can get them in specific colors as well. I'm using the tinies, I believe they're SS2 crystal AB rhinestones. Um, and it comes with a wax picker, which is great. Um, so I'm using my Zule Bling Adhesive. On a few of the nails, I'm just adding a single stone right underneath those three dots. And on the, the full body butterfly, I added um, four stones along the body of the butterfly, as you can see. And the bling just added a tiny bit of something special. You know, if you can add some bling, add the bling. Bling makes everything better. I'm going in with my matte top coat. She actually surprised me. Um, very few of my clients enjoy a matte nail. And when she said she loved the matte, I was like, yes. Um, so we're going matte. I've got my favorite Beatles matte top coat out and I'm being very careful because this is a pigment design. If you brush really hard or excessively over that pigment area, it might wipe away the powder. So I'm being very, very cautious. Also, not to get that um, top coat on top of the rhinestones. We don't want them to lose their sparkle, but that's basically it. After this application, I'm gonna have her cure for two minutes just to make sure that this matte is gorgeous and set on her nails.
And here's what this fun bright set came up looking like. I think it was so pretty and delicious and just warm and exciting for spring. I really loved it. She loved it. Hopefully you like this video. Like if you do, subscribe for more. Thank you so much for watching. This slow-mo makes me so excited. I need to just do my nails because I don't have any nails on right now and I'm like a little bit jealous. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.